some term papers, and she's like, no. So I actually ended up sending, because a couple of my friends have always been like, you write the best emails, like if I want to, and sit down. And, okay, so I, sa- I, I said, I can send you some emails. And she said, yeah. And one of them ends up, is this email that I sent to my friend Chris uh, when he was brand new, new to sobriety, and I had been six months sober, and it's about, you know, my new, like, how, it's just about telling the truth and sort of my life, how I see my life now, and it ends up being, it's, chap, it's the chapter, um, Welcome to the Planet of the Eight uh, mm-hmm. in the book. So anyway, she had read that email and obviously and said, you have to write this, and I said, honey, I, I was like, I, I barely tell, I, I told five people, I, I'm, I don't talk about stuff, you know, and the minute she asked, I hung up with her, I just started writing. I never stopped. And so it's just sort of been this, it's been this avalanche that is just, I haven't been, I, I couldn't help it. I just had to tell it. Well, and once it starts flowing, a lot of times you have to sit there and just keep writing while it's there. Exactly. Because, some, you know, the, the, you get into that little glitch where you're like, oh, no, now what's next? And then you... Yeah, but I, but the thing that was amazing is, like, is, is I, you know, I, again, I did not know I could write. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. and I love it. I've always loved reading. I've been a huge reader my whole life. And I was so happily it was just a fun, joyous thing to discover something, you know, you can do something, you know, in right. your 40s. I was like, right. oh, look at me. <laughs> I'm writing a book, you know. Um, sure, there are problems, and it's raw, and there are issues with it. But, like, you know, it's because it was written by me, not a ghostwriter, you know. Right, right. People want now, more stories of my career or this or that, and, you know, the bottom line is that wasn't the point of the book. How long did it take you to write it? A year and a half. A year and a half? Oh. Yeah. It was Do you hard. think it yeah. would have I mean, gone not... faster if you knew how to type? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, you know, I don't know because the whole, like, the joy of putting, first of all, two, my two fingers go fast, FYI. Mm-hmm. I'm not, some, you know, I don't go so easy to I mean, I type really fast. But, oh, do you? Uh, I'm sure it would have gone faster. I think what it was, you know, was I also had jobs. You know, I was doing acting jobs. I right, was, right. I was editing the book in all night, every night, and getting the book ready to go to the printers uh, while I was shooting the first season of The X's. You know, so stuff like mm-hmm. that. It was, it was hard. It was stressful. Yeah, I can imagine. What and kind also of going through that to- time, you know, that that time in my life isn't exactly, you know. It's it's hard. You have to think about it a lot. I'm like, how do I put into words what happened to me that night in the back, You know, when my when my belly when my guts exploded. Well, you were very I... descriptive. You did a very Thank good you. job. Of it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I really wanted people to understand the sort of level of excruciation and the humiliation and sort of, uh, you know, what what happened to me, you know. So I really had to go back there and kind of live it, live there for a long time. Yeah. Something I, mean, I don't want to do again. <laughs> I was going to say that couldn't have been too enjoyable to, to have to no, think back. No, it wasn't. That's why you I won't through. be doing like a, like a long-running one-woman show on it or something. Because, I, I, you know, people ask all the time, but, it's too much. I just, you know, there are parts that are just a blast of the book that I could do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would read you right now, but like that, there are certain parts of it that I can't. It just yeah. would be too much. Yeah, I I like the part where you met up with the girl Amy and. and uh... <laughs> uh-huh. Yes. She yes. Has it's it's really amazing. It's an amazing story, and it, it yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll I'll explain to your listeners that it's there's this part in the book where um, I, you know I was I was I was so humiliated when I was a kid because I because of my height and because of I was just a dork and I was a reader and whatever and so uh, and I also said the worst things at the exact wrong moment and things like that so I was really kind of tortured uh, by the group of very chic popular girls and there was this lead girl named Amy and that is not her name right. and in fact it's 
if you want to know the inside scoop, it's that's actually two girls that I combined oh. into one. And I did oh. see that at the very beginning. Yeah, it's these okay. two girls that were, yeah, they ruled the school. And um, I, I, they, and there was one, one of them was stunning. And one of them wasn't quite as stunning, but was hideously mean. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then I ran into one of them many years later at the, uh, in, the, um, in the local mall, and she was quite different. It was great. She asked me for my autograph. It was awesome. And, you know, without a thought in her head, I, she probably forgot what she even did to you. Oh, yeah, but, you know, mm-hmm. I think that's the way a lot of times. I just think right. that they're like, and that's why I wanted to make it so um, hide who that person was so much or those people because I, I, you know, those people probably say to their kids, like, I was friends with her. You know, I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Well, people mm-hmm. change. They get cooler. But I don't want to punish somebody for something they did when they were 11. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yes, kids can be cruel, but then they grow up to be adults and see what they've done and hopefully yep. change at that point. So, And do you know the guy, Sully, the guy who uh, I, I end up kicking and who beat up mm-hmm. my brother a lot? Yep. He yep. actually, I found out that he is a long-term AA member. That's not his name, by the way. Yeah. But yeah. Um, who he is, is not, he's been an AA a long time. So isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a small world and... You know, a lot of people have more problems. And AA makes it smaller. Yes, <laughs> no, exactly. No, it makes it smaller. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing I've, uh, after Gus that I've learned is, you know, wow, there are so many people that are hurting mm-hmm. and struggling. And I really thought I was kind of alone, you know? I think you yeah. feel that way when you're struggling. Yeah, yeah and, uh, it's Or you true. think you're the worst or, you know. Right. And, um... And then to, to sort of through the gut, it developed this amazing community on Twitter and on Facebook of, especially the Facebook page too, of just pe- where people can turn to, to support each other. It's incredible. Well, mm-hmm. what I what I have to give you kudos for is that you actually talk to these people when they say something or if they ask you yeah. something, you actually Why talk to I them. A lot of people why don't. Why wouldn't I? I know. I well, so because weird. a lot of them don't. They write a book then and that's it. why do you have a Twitter you know? account? Pardon? I don't understand why you would have a Twitter account and then not talk to people. Oh, yeah. Well, there's mm-hmm. a lot of them. Good point. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. weird. It's yeah. Weird. Yeah. But anyway, not many yes, people I are twitter like that. I really do try to talk to everybody if I can. Mm-hmm. I mean, I miss a lot of people, but I try to talk to as many as I can. Yeah, well, I can't imagine being you and having like a thousand tweets every second coming at me. So I give you credit for that. But you know, I you know, some days some days it's a ton, and some days it's. But you know, I really, I just, especially with people who are are you know struggling or 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 got issue, you know, questions about addiction or whatever. And of course, I'm not some, I'm not some expert, but you know, I'll listen. Mm-hmm. I'll listen to anybody because that's all I needed. You know, I just needed somebody to care. You know? Right, right, right. And yeah. I know and in anything that you're going through, you want somebody to listen to you and not so much ask for their advice, but just sit and listen to you. And once you get it off your chest, and instead yeah, and of paying a therapist. You, respect, you enough, <laughs> respect you enough to hear it. Now, mm-hmm. if people, mm-hmm. like, pouring their pain out on me every day, no. I'm not interested no. in that. Yeah. But if you need to share something with me and you are struggling, I'll I'll read it and respect you, you know. But then I get people who want to have coffee and stuff, and I'm like, I can't, you know. Otherwise, I'd be, you know, literally at Starbucks every day all day long. I, you know, I can't. And mm-hmm. some people got yeah. offended by that, but what can you do? Well, you can't please everybody, you know. But no, I think you have you to have pretty... really good boundaries. You just have to. But, um, mm-hmm. you know, like there's a friend of mine uh, who I is probably listening. She's a friend of mine from Twitter. And uh, she, when I, I'm not going to say her name, but when I first interacted with her, um, she asked me to follow her or something, and I said no or something. And she said goodbye. And so I... What? I... I, so instead of, but instead of dumping her or saying, okay, whatever, 
I I ended up following her and DMing her and just saying, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. And that has that was the start of a like a friendship for my life of this woman who just needed somebody to care and uh and and she's been a remarkable friend of mine so you know wow. it's been great a, yeah that's what an amazing, amazing story Thanks. well i want to touch on something else that i i admire you for and that's the your co-founder and executive director of slam in yes. New York, the first yes. sober high school. Yeah. Tell us about yes. that. How did it get started? Well, there are well, there are over thirty. Uh, there are over thirty uh, sober high schools flourishing across the United States today, and there are there is zero in New York State or uh, city, uh, mm-hmm. which feels wrong. I mean, there are five. I know four in Boston in the Boston area alone. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, anyway, I just think it's wrong. And one of the reasons my attention was brought to it is when I went to rehab, um, I walked in, and I was, I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit drunk, and mm-hmm. I just thought, oh, my God, am I at a summer camp? Like, I just didn't know what had happened. Why is everybody 21? And then when I sobered up, I asked my counselor, and he, and he said, and the look on his face was just horrified. He said, Kristen, this is what rehabs look like nowadays. And since then, I've really started, you know, in the last six years, I started researching and, and finding out terrifying information about uh, that that one out of every one in eight United teenagers in the United States meets the medical criteria for addiction. One in eight. That's a lot. Yeah. And uh, one in 70 will go to rehab. And oh. if, they, if a kid goes to rehab and goes back to their regular high school, their chances, I mean, you should just flush 40 grand down the toilet or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, their chances of relapse are like 90%. I personally think it's 100, but there you go. I mean, mm-hmm. come on, if I forget it, I would have been gone within the first two minutes. But if you if a kid goes to a you know recovery based high school, seventy uh, percent of them graduate drug and alcohol free. That's wonderful. So it's a profound, profound movement, and one that has been such a really life struggle of mine. Uh, and uh, and I just want it to happen so badly. And I don't even care about teenagers. I just. I, I mean, no, I do, but like, I'm not like some, I'm not like some teenage person, you know. But like, it's what we should do. It's the right thing, right. you know. We need to take care of our kids, and uh, and I don't think we do as a society. So I've been trying to make it a public high school, which has been disastrous. They will not, you know, say yes to us. They board of ed, and so now we're making it. A private school with, uh, you know, a huge percentage uh, scholarship, um, you know, because I don't want it to be some, you know, community school, you know, and it's not rehab, and you can't go, I don't want, you know, people to go just, you know, just, you know, their mom and daddy shove them there because they don't know what else to do with them. The kid has to want to come. Yeah, yeah. So, um so, you know, we're, I'm trying so hard to do it. It's not easy, but we're still rocking it. And if anybody's interested in more information, please visit our website, which is slamnyc.org, and um, you can get more information there or whatever. And you can donate every dollar. Oh, we would love oh. it. We would love it. Any That's little nice. bit help. We need stamps. No, I'm kidding. But no, we're, um, <laughs> what we're really looking for right now is since we want to make we want people to now to underwrite school. You know, we want to make it a private school. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, we're approaching sort of big companies to try to to do that. Um, no. but sure, any little bit helps for God's sake. And it really is. We're we're really hardworking. Uh, we really care. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I hope that you get the backing that you need because I think I it's extremely so important. I mean, you see too. too many TV shows about these kids in school and, and partying it up and, 
you know, that doesn't stop at summer. We have have, have no idea. The workforce, what we're about as, as a 